Hey guys, Doc. It is Thanksgiving morning, but we're not doing Thanksgiving today. We're doing our Thanksgiving on Sunday. It just makes it easier to do it on a separate day. So deer hunting this morning. Uh, took a family member deer hunting with me on my property. She actually shot a buck and then she had to go cook. So I had to go get the buck out by myself, of course. So I'm gonna show you today a little trick that I made. I kind of invented this last year on the other UTV we have, and I didn't know if it would work on my John Deere Gator, but it works great. Uh, I think the, the parts that I bought, it'll cost you about 15 bucks maybe to make this thing, but man, you know, a 60 year old guy out in the woods dragging a deer, having to load it up in your UTV, how do you do that? This is so simple and so easy. I'm gonna show you that. Uh, I did shoot it on my phone, so I'm gonna do some on the phone, some on this camera, and then I'll come back up here and I wanna show you these fields that have absolutely exploded. These are all planted for the wildlife. This whole area is all planted for the wildlife, the deer, the turkey, rabbits, whatever we have. And we finally got rain. We're in a severe drought and man, it rained for 30 hours straight. Um, I forgot to check my rain gauge. You can go check my rain gauge. I think it was about one point, almost two inches of rain, 1.8 inches. They just phenomenal and this stuff is exploding so i'll take you back up here so if you don't want to see a dead deer i'm going to warn you right now do not watch this video because i'm going to show you a dead deer do not watch it if you don't like deer hunting if you don't want to see a dead deer turn off this video go somewhere else here we go i go straight from the bank gassing up the tank cranking up the radio playing old hank it ain't that long till i'm back at the farm by yourself you're 60 years old and you're in the woods how do you load a deer into your UTV so I came up with this last year this system so I've got a buck down uh, here all I do is I tilt my bed I open my gate tilt my bed and I use my winch line the problem is if you use your winch line over your roof you're gonna crack your roof so let me show you what I did all right so what I've done I hook them around the shoulders up here run the line over the top of my roof keep your motor running by the way so you get a little bit more power and then up here I made a board and I screwed on two heavy-duty winches and I actually left the screws out a little bit so they can actually bite into this a little bit so Here's my only problem. My only problem is, is this worked great on my other, on my Axis UTV. I've never done it on the John Deere, so there's a good chance I'm gonna crack my roof. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see how this goes. Let's get the winch back here. So far, so good. And then all you gotta do is just get his head and antlers over this.
then what I can do is I put my gate down. deer loaded up in the back of the UTV. So when you're getting them off the UTV, the nice thing is, is my tailgate is about an inch and a half below this. See that? So I can just basically just go in here and I hop up here and just drag them right in. Man, that makes it so easy. But anyways, it's a good meat deer. This is the kind of buck we like to take out here. We don't, we, the, the, the spikes are too small and we don't want to take like a, a three and a half or four and a half year old deer. Even though this deer had really good potential, this is what we'd rather take. All right, so what I need to do now is uh, I'm gonna re release the tension on the deer and then I just basically just pull the deer up in the back. But man, he's, he's stinky, he smells like rut. <laughs> So one little other tip I'll give you is <laughs> we spray permethrin on our boots and pants for ticks and chiggers. But one year I got covered in poison ivy because I was touching this deer. He had poison ivy apparently on his fur. So I always wear black gloves when I'm handling them now. Oh boy, he smells like rut. So anyways, that's how it goes. Man, what an easy, easy, easy recovery. Okay, so I wanna show you these food plots. All this acreage up here is managed for the wildlife. This is all for the deer, the turkey, rabbits. We have everything up here. We did do, if you didn't watch my other video, we did a winterizing on the garden. So this garden is now all prepped up for the winter, but I'm leaving my turnips and carrots and a few other things in here, but that's all set for the winter. But you wanna, I wanna, this is just amazing. So everywhere else around us is basically dead. It's been a three month drought. It's been worse severe drought conditions until two days ago when it started raining. I'm gonna check and see how much rain we got, but man, I gotta tell you what, this stuff is absolutely exploding. Now we had 14,000 pounds of lime spread over all these fields. I have three fields like this, but look at the diversity in here. This is crazy. So I've got, I've got turnip, brassica, I've got cereal rye, I've got clover. These fields are just amazing. I also have Austrian winter peas that are just now starting to germinate. So I'm gonna run up. I need to check the corn field up here because the cornfield, I wasn't able to irrigate it, but I got a bunch of seed out there and I wanna see how that's doing. But this other field, man, they're both just, all these fields are all, we spend a lot of time and money on these fields for the deer. Now, just so you understand a principle of the game management we do here, it's 40 acres surrounded by tens of thousands of acres. Our does are residential. We know, we can see them, we can tell by scars, we can actually tell the babies, we come out and we talk to the baby deer out here. We don't take any does. We want as many does as possible because those does attract the bucks. So all the bucks from all around here come through my property and check my does. And it's, people think I'm exaggerating. My brother was like, holy cow. He came up and hunted for four days. And I guarantee you, we saw 40 different bucks in four days. I, I, if I look every night, I have over 300 pictures on my game cameras. I'll bet you I'll see probably 200 bucks, different bucks this year during gun season up on my property. So um, it's not like if I, sh I should pass on this deer because he's not residential. There's no telling if he'll be back. I don't really, I don't really trophy hunt here. I, I, if I see a large buck, if I see a really nice trophy buck, I'll hunt that buck. But other than that, it's basically we just want a good sized deer for meat. I got a real great butcher shop down the road and uh, he does all my processing. He does everything from jerky to regular processing to chopstick to whatever you want. It's just sausage. He does great processing. They actually process cows as their main business. They actually butcher the local cows during deer season. They bring deer in and they do deer. I'm going to take go up. If you want to ride with me, I'm going to go up to this cornfield and look at it.
So this is the field I really wanted to see because this field basically died. This corn just all turned brown. I came over, I didn't pull it up. I actually just chopped up all that corn with my um, toe behind cutter. We came in here, we ran a subsoiler. Again, this was had a bunch of lime put down on it because we got real high potassium, which makes that hard, hard, hard clay soil. But man, this is looking phenomenal. <laughs> it's just, everything is just exploding in here. I want to see if I can find any of these Austrian, uh, these Austrian winter peas in here. So that is my Thanksgiving day adventure for the morning. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to chill out today. I think it was really cold this morning. It was nice, but that's just a little tip, a little gadget that I made. If you have a UTV, it's always hard to figure out that cable system. Anyways, um, the deer has been dropped off at the processor. We check it in via the app. Georgia actually has an app that you do your check in with. I don't personally have to have, we don't have to have, if we live here in Georgia, you don't have to have a hunting license. You just have to have a game record and record it if you hunt your own private property. But personally, I buy a license every year. I just think it's a good cause. The money goes to a good cause. It supports the wildlife and everything else. So I buy one, but if a family member's hunting here, they don't have to, if they're a direct blood, blood relative living here on my property, they actually don't have to have a hunting license. They just have to have a um, harvest record. Like I said, we may take, I may take one or two deer off this property the whole season. That's it. We just put, we like to put a little bit of meat up for the season. We grow our own vegetables. We eat our own meat most of the time. And uh, that's about it. Talk to you later. Doc.